Okay, hello everyone. I'm Giulio, and today I will talk to you a bit about um, um, the use of um, Blender in general of 3D modeling in the world of uh, healthcare and uh, the work we did with WASP. I'm um, I'm talking about uh, uh, WASP a bit during the presentation, and uh, now let's see a video just to start. I'm not crazy, sorry, I know this has nothing to do with healthcare, but it was something I needed to explain you uh, who we are with WASP. Um, this is the house you saw in the video, and um, basically we are a um, 3D printing company based here in Italy, between Bologna and Ravenna, and um, we are working with 3D technologies since uh, six years. Um, our main goal is to um, get uh, all the best technologies in the world, all the possibilities that we have around in the world now, and uh, bring them at, um, um, at the human needs. So like creating this connection that can uh, use technology in order to really help uh, um, basic needing. You saw this is one of our main projects about the housing. So the idea is creating a system for um, um, sustainable housing all around the world, but uh, there are a lot of themes that uh, in our world need uh, uh, innovation and research, and our goal is to bring uh, these technologies uh, in the fields. So food, uh, energy, and healthcare, of course, is one of these. We like to say we're not that full to think we can save the world, but we prefer not to try to work for it. So like um, innovation is also responsibility, you know. How do we do this? with 3D printers. And uh, we are developing 3D printers in Sears. We have developed um, uh, various kind of machines for working with different materials in different uh, fields of application. And um, what I think is the best of this is that uh, our work uh, as a team uh, um, gathered so much collaboration that we had the possibility to work in so many different fields. So starting from traditional 3D printing with uh, prototypes and models, then we went to printing different materials like uh, porcelain, ceramics, and creating complex geometries, growing bigger in scale. Uh, this is a, a ceramic vase, but also developing bigger machines for creating furniture and uh, objects that could be really used in real life. And then <laughs> increasing up to the scale, this is one of the projects we made in which we created like a scenography uh, for a theater. Um, one of the applications of our printers since the beginning has been the one in the medical field. So this example you see is, uh, um, is uh, the printing of a, uh, active uh, medical material that could be used uh, during some researches. Um, so medical field, uh, why 3D printing is good in medical field? Uh, for one main thing, uh, producing a single piece or a unique piece with 3D printing is very convenient. You do not need uh, molds, casts, and uh, 3D printing um, has a, a cost of production which is the same for a single model or for various uh, um, shapes of production. For the printer, it doesn't change anything. So this makes possible uh, to realize uh, um, pieces and objects for each patient at a very low cost compared to traditional technologies. Also, we can include all the possibilities of uh, digital design, of course, inside this workflow. In 2018, we developed this, which is a, um, a bundle of stuff we designed for making all the workflow inside, in this case, um, orthopedic laboratory, um, suitable for the use. So uh, starting from the scanner, the one you see on the left, and then with 3D printers, certified materials, 
uh, a workstation for designing, it was possible to complete all the process from uh, scanning the body of the patient to the final uh, device uh, 3D printed with certified material. And this was uh, a main goal for us to bring the technology inside uh, um, the, the world of orthotics. The world of orthotics as um, uh, a traditional technique which is uh, uh, really, um, uh, it's really about uh, uh, crafts, uh, it's really about uh, uh, handmade uh, processing and bringing digital manufacturing there is not that easy. So now we're going to see <laughs> what this means. This is a um, video for the promotion of the system. Basically, the, the important thing is understanding um, how this can happen. So how do we switch from traditional technique to the new one? Consider that uh, the first thing in both uh, uh, methods is um, gathering the shape of the body. So in a traditional technique, uh, we used to cast something uh, on the body. So usually the cast is made with uh, uh, a material that needs to dry and when it's hard it, uh, it's used as a mold for all the work and after this process you have to throw it away because each patient has a different cast and this uh, has to be thrown away and cannot be stored. On the other hand with digital technologies we have the possibility of um, using 3D scanning so minimizing the time of scanning and improving a lot the quality of the acquisition. Also, we have the possibility to operate with different uh, softwares and technology um, to modify this data in a way that uh, just cannot be done with a physical cast. Also, we are talk about it later. Um, by using this approach, you have the possibility of um, creating libraries and storing all the data of the patient. So, not only the 3D scanning, but also the, the actual device. So, if a patient comes to you two years later needing the same kind of uh, device, you can actually produce it with the data you stored and actually used uh, years before. So here you see we are um, we are working with the different kind of devices. We are working in uh, 3D braces, uh, corsets, um, but also insoles, but also um, AFOS and any kind of thing that actually needs to be surrounding the body and um, working uh, like pulling and pushing in some way. Here is very interesting how with 3D printing we can create shapes that are actually impossible or very very complicated to create with the traditional technique and this is a reason um, for which uh, um, importing all the knowledge of the digital manufacturing in the world of healthcare is very important and crucial. So we are trying to develop um, this kind of uh, new way of thinking. The other interesting thing about this is that we can actually um, work, work together with traditional technique and new digital technologies. So they can work together in order to get the best result as possible. But the main question at the end of the thing is why? We already said something, but why introducing 3D technology in orthotics if I have to convince someone who's working in the field that maybe is already using all his uh, workflows and uh, mm, traditional application of the technology, why should we switch to a digital, uh, a digital way? I decided to do a SWOT analysis. After all the experience and the cases of people we know uh, coming into our, uh, our reality and uh, trying to figure it out, how to use the these technologies, um, I created like this uh, analysis of strength versus weaknesses and opportunities versus threats. So now let's see the main points. No costs, so you have a uh, great saving time and resources with the cost, which is also quite uh, um, a problem for the um, for the dismantling. And uh, after the use, they need to be thrown away with costs and uh, clearly environmental environmental um, implications. The, create, the possibility of creating long terms uh, and accurate libraries with the patient. So this is uh, improving a lot uh, the service you give to the patient and also the possibility of uh, uh, saving data that couldn't be stored just physically. You have endless possibility of design due to the wide uh, range of uh, shapes you can create with additive manufacturing and of course the wide, even wider possibilities with 3D design. And as we said, reduce of waste and labor on the single piece. So I do not uh, 
um, I do not discard a part of what I'm creating. For example, as if I'm working with a sheet and I'm cutting away parts, with additive manufacturing, we only depose the material we need. Last but not least, uh, working together with traditional techniques. So a lot of our customers actually put together um, traditional technique with maybe some printed parts that uh, use as a mold or use as accessories. And this is for me is very interesting. What's the weakness? What's the problem in this? Mainly this, that uh, bringing uh, the technology to an orthopedic laboratory is uh, actually something very difficult to do uh, and, uh, um, and appreciate for someone who is not used, just use a computer every day. And this is a main problem. What are the opportunities of the technologies? A smarter workflow, so with saving time, resources, working more accurately. Innovative products uh, with new technologies. Mm, we have the possibility of creating uh, uh, a wider range of products, maybe even exploring uh, fields of the, of the rehabilitation of the cure that now hasn't been explored for technological limits. And also, not less important, low budget devices, for example, um, exploring the uses of additive manufacturing in contexts and in uh, countries where uh, healthcare must be really low budget in order to be suitable for all the people. And this is the case, for example, of uh, a project we developed uh, in Damascus in Syria with a um, laboratory we are, um, we are developing with the Syrian guys and uh, exactly bringing the open source projects like Enable, I don't know if anyone of you knows it, and creating them with printers. So the opportunities are a lot. And again, what's the threat? Probably <laughs> that uh, you will have uh, to face a new way of um, seeing your work. So what we're doing basically with WASMED is uh, trying to remove this uh, separation between 3D technologies and that care world. Uh, it does exist, this separation. A lot of uh, proprietary softwares exist uh, in order to give uh, uh, people these uh, tools, but actually um, the offer, sometimes it's uh, very expensive and not really uh, at the use of the people because maybe it's complicated, because maybe it's not, uh, it's not spreading that much. So we thought of doing something a bit different, something easy to use. So for someone who has not a uh, uh, 3D modeling background or has knowledge about computers, something that could be open source to reach actually everyone and to spread it all, all, uh, all around. Also in order to really have this technology to work in the field of healthcare. And then integrated, so that could be part of a software that gives you real and professional uh, possibilities. Who could work, uh, work it out with this? Uh, we needed the help of someone knowing very well software. And this one is <laughs> Alessandro Zamparelli, who is here. I don't know if in the morning you saw his presentation in the theater, if you didn't check it out on YouTube because it was amazing. And um, why Alessandro Zamparelli? Because in his experience, um, he had been working, uh, especially in the project Mox, in um, 3D shapes modeled on um, human scannings and that then needed to be 3D printed. This was like, uh, I see it as an exercise, an exercise and a research, but it has a lot to do with uh, uh, healthcare because basically we're talking about human body, we're talking about uh, uh, um, managing this uh, digital data and getting out with a final input, uh, with, a, with a final output that could be actually wearable on the body. So this made him the best person to do the add-on with and we went straight on last year in 2018 uh, with the developing of uh, WASPMED add-on for Blender 2.8. And uh, as I told, uh, we wanted it to be easy to use, uh, which um, with the interface of Blender was not uh, that uh, easy to achieve. Uh, open source, so for this there was no choice and Blender was the program for its powerful possibility and the great community around it. And integrated, mm, giving the possibility to the users to uh, if they wanted to actually use all the tools and all the powerful solutions inside Blender, um, even if they were not actually inside the add-on, but we wanted to leave them free to use them. So let's have a quick overview inside the, inside the add-on. Everything starts with the importing of a scan. Doesn't matter which scanner you're using. Sometimes in proprietary programs, you need to use a specific uh, licensed uh, scan uh, with uh, all permissions and everything. Here you can actually scan as you want and import your STL or any kind of file. You have here 
um, fixer based on remesh modifier that actually gives you the mm, makes you certain that uh, everything is manifold, and then you can switch to sculpting tools in order to fix some scan uh, problems, but also starting, as you see now, uh, making mm, some uh, corrections and modifications that can go into the, mm, into the medical, uh, medical side of the thing. So uh, you can push, you can pull, you can actually smooth. This is another tool we were asked from the professionals, which is uh, based on lattice modifier, and it gives you the possibility to work uh, with the grid and uh, modifying uh, everything for points or even directly with a pre-made set, uh, twisting some sections, as you're seeing now. So for example, now I gave 15 degrees of uh, twisting on a side. After these modifications, you should be done with, uh, with the corrections, and you can go and, um, and cut what you are not needing. So usually we don't need arms, we don't need the head, so no problems, we're just going to remove it. After this, we are done, and we have basically, we call it the positive, of the of the bust, and um, we are now switching to the most important part of the add-on. And um, why did we decide to create uh, the the model like this? Because for someone approaching for the first time 3D, it's not that easy to model. It's not easy to think of vertex vertices and uh, to move them to extrude. For them, it's absolutely not easy. So we thought of weight painting as a, a really intuitive way of uh, creating. Uh, the shape. So just painting in red what you want as uh, the actual brace, uh, the final brace, you have the possibility to, to shape it. And it's really, really easy even for someone using it for the first time. Also, you can use it actually with, uh, with a tablet. So with uh, a pen, you can make it even easier and, um, and just sketch it as if uh, you were doing it on the paper. So after this, um, what the software is doing is divide them dividing the blue and the red part into different, uh, um, into different components. The red one has a certain thickness, which is the actual th thickness of the final device. And the blue one is something that can work as a support in 3D printing or can actually be removed. So you see now we are setting the minimum thickness for the gray part and uh, the actual thickness of the orthesis in the max. Also, we have a specific control on the fall off of the border. So I can choose to have it linear. I can choose to smooth it. I can choose to create it custom as I want it. And um, this is very important because this gray part has to be removed after the printing. So uh, it's very useful to be printed, working as a support and something that keeps everything together. But uh, later, when I have to remove it, if the fall off is um, created properly, um, it's very easy to cut it, for example, with a small blade and uh, without needing of uh, complex tools or something that may be dangerous also for who is working on that. Also, you see we have uh, two utilities, one for smoothing the support and one for cropping the top and the bottom uh, if we don't need it. So we have everything super optimized for 3D printing with this uh, kind of easy workflow. Here we have a phase in which uh, the object has been baked, you see, and I can work here with other Blender tools if I want to create some more complexity. So I want to create accessories, holes, something uh, created uh, more complexly. I can work there. Or else I can go to the exporting and I have uh, the model exported ready for the 3D printing. So you see this is the slicing software where we prepare the model for the 3D printing and for give it, uh, give it uh, shape. So. So you see, this is the preview of the, of the work that will be done from, by the printer. You see, the printer is increasing in eight, and this is just a preview. But what comes out of the printer is actually this. And all the, um, all the workflow is uh, very controlled. We also tried, uh, and this uh, it was very important and difficult, to avoid and remove all the stuff that could um, create the problems, that could create uh, maybe um, misunderstanding, so it was very important to set the values uh, of the units. It was very important, everything. If it's not enough and you're looking for more complexity, as I told you, there is the possibility to work uh, with uh, the other tools in Blender, and for this, the education is crucial. So what we decided to do is uh, creating and organizing a specific course uh, for uh, the use of Blender in um, orthotics, and uh, this uh, took place in September in Bologna, and uh, it was very interesting. It was a four-day course uh, for people that uh, 
didn't know anything of Blender, and we started from the basics the first two days, and then we had the possibility to go deep inside the topics. And at the end of the um, workshop, they were able to actually model on their own, from the scanning and everything, um, something like this, like an AFO, or something like a protective mask. This is for sport use, even if it seems kind of superhero, it's actually for sport use. Or, for example, this is a socket that uh, can be put on amputations. And um, this, for us, uh, has a um, great meaning because giving the possibility to the ones really working on the field to um, have access to the technologies for us is crucial. And um, we found out that uh, the, main, uh, the main problem in all the workflow was actually this one of 3D modeling. So we found out um, um, that we have had the possibility with Blender uh, to create a very professional and a very uh, suitable uh, tool for this and um, we are very happy now to have the possibility to spread it. Uh, you can download it on GitHub and it's uh, free for the use for everyone uh, because our purpose is really to share this culture of um, open source uh, knowledge also in, uh, in the field of healthcare. So uh, I imagine in my, in my vision, I imagine um, that uh, maybe one day in another country, maybe in some country where you have problems or you don't have all these resources, you have the possibility with a small 3D printer and your computer um, to download this plugin and start creating useful stuff for people. So this is our concept and uh, we will work, uh, we'll work uh, and keep on working for make it real. And um, thank you everyone. Then if you have any questions, uh, I'm available for uh, any kind of uh, specification. Even now, if you had some curiosity, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the ones you saw here is not, it is not, it's, um, but we are also using uh, uh, a very good one which is open source and it's called the uh, uh, Slicer and uh, co written with the three um, in, uh, in DE and uh, this is a very good one and um, it's, um, it's also improving a lot in the years and now it features uh, basically any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, feature you need uh, for uh, printing your model. So yeah, there is uh, the possibility of a complete workflow with uh, free softwares. Mm. Other questions, curiosities? Okay, so I, I think I'm done. Thank you.